And I'm very uh, privileged to be part of this uh, community meeting and to be on the same uh, platform with uh, such de devoted and dedicated campaigners against West Connex. I'm here to report upon a, a year-long project that I've done with my colleagues and uh, graduate students in the Urban Development Design Program at the University of New South Wales. We call this uh, Metro West Connex, Redefine, Reinvent, Restructure, Redefine West Connex, Reinvent a Sustainable Mode of Travel, Restructure Sydney's Transit Network. Of course, we are struck by the complete folly of this project. The very idea of having uh, freeways converging on the centre of the city has been proved to be dysfunctional in cities around the world. It's astonishing to see such a proposition emerging in 21st century Sydney. And as cities have demonstrated time and time again, more roads induce more traffic. And what is needed, of course, is a deeper understanding of the changes that are happening at this time, as I'll come to at the end of my presentation, but also, of course, a thorough commitment to adequate and, and, and uh, public transport. We've been talking so far about West Connex as perhaps most people know it, stage one and stage two, as Jenny was referring to, and stage three, an EIS still to be released this year. But as the wonderful activist and urbanist from New York in the 1960s, Jane Jacobs, stated, a city expressway program is never finished. It is rather like getting hooked on an addictive drug. And so, therefore, uh, the c continuation of this project, which of course has been announced by Premier Berejiklian, is to build more roads with the uh, West, West Harbour Tunnel, tunnelling under Balmain and, uh, and under another tunnel under the harbour, and then the so-called Beaches Link, which is uh, being uh, promoted for one of the current by-elections underway. Uh, so that's another $20 billion, everybody, <laughs> uh, on top of the $16 billion or 16.8 that uh, Jenny was uh, outlining earlier. We propose a different approach. Sadly, so much of the West Connex uh, project is committed, it would seem, and uh, tunnelling has started. Uh, certainly, all the t really traumatic resumptions, demolitions, land clearing and alienation of parkland and, and re reduction of trees, of course, has taken place. But this project is happening. So our proposal is don't put cars and vehicle, motor vehicles in it. Put a metro in it. So turn it into a proper rail system instead. And uh, that was the proposition that we put forward. This government has actually come up with um, a bad metro design coming from Kajigong Road beyond Rouse Hill into the city and then onto Bankstown. It's got a bad motorway design that we're fully aware of and of course a bad light rail design as well. So instead of having uh, a proper transport system for which this city really needs, which is an integrated system of metro lines, we've got the worst of all possible worlds uh, happening at great expense right now. So our proposition was to convert the M4 and the M5 proposals into metro lines, link them and link them through the city. Uh, and so we have an exhibition that's been on for a few weeks and it's on for one more week. I, I regret to say it's only open officially uh, on Monday to Friday in business hours in the gallery of our Red Centre West Wing at the uh, UNSW Kensington campus. Um, and uh, it will probably be taken down next Saturday. Uh, what we have uh, in the room is a, a t two analyses of the M5 and the M4 converging on our alternative for what we think should happen. While we were working on this, uh, Premier Baird uh, announced a, a new railway for Western Sydney, which of course has been talked about, but uh, a metro connection from Sydney to, to Parramatta. We were already thinking of this well before that. Uh, but in case you haven't, haven't sort of focused on this particular image, here it is in a full scale. A driverless train with people happily standing up all the way to Parramatta. Uh, not as bad as standing up all the way from Kajagong Road into the city, but nevertheless an efficient, union-free transport system that would nevertheless be rapid and effective and a powerful alternative to, of course, uh, our current transport systems. And uh, certainly far, far better than more roads and more cars and more traffic. So that is our proposition. 
we think that the, of course, the link between the M5 and the M4 must never happen. And whether there's any chance to stop it, I fully support Jenny Gong's call today. But that is, uh, that's the one thing that must be stopped at this point. And because it can only ever uh, be resolved with more, more roads uh, across to the north side and, and so on, another $20 billion. Now, we also then looked at what could be done to the devastated communities along the way. And instead of the spaghetti junctions and the infrastructure and the appalling architecture of, of what's being built by the Sydney Motor Co Corporation, where we came up with ideas for transit-oriented development around new metro rail stations, which would have uh, perhaps a, a fine-grained connection and connectivity to do some healing of the trauma that's already been carried out. I, I won't go through those in any detail, but what we're seeing is an alternative to the construction sites that uh, powerfully described just a moment ago. So we've looked along the M4 alignment, all the way out beyond Strathfield, where the, the metro line would run along the middle of the motorway, as they do in American cities, but with uh, very powerful opportunities for air rights developments over them to heal both sides of the existing severed communities of the, created by the M4 in the past. And then we similarly looked at the M5 coming up from Kingsgrove all, all the way to Mascot and so on, uh, with a similar set of investigations, which I won't uh, put before you this evening. And then all our students worked on this for several studios, and 200,000 people could be accommodated in new, fine-grained, interesting, mixed-use developments instead of spaghetti road intersections and uh, devastated uh, communities and, of course, traffic converging on the centre city. So we advocate a more integrated system. It, it, the West Connex is not going to solve congestion. It'll move congestion from point A to point B. The way to really solve the problems of Sydney, arguably perhaps to build a second uh, Sydney airport, where so we have two airports instead of one uh, with all the focus on logistics and transport movements that that entails. Port Botany, clearly all containers should be moved out of Port Botany by rail to intermodal transfer points on the periphery of the city. Possibly uh, user pays charges on a wider basis uh, across the metropolitan area is a possibility. But the greatest change of all is the technology that everybody has. That is the new ways of communicating and the potential of car sharing. At a conservative estimate, about 5.2 million empty car seats on the roads of Sydney every day. And we now have the means to connect with each other and have a much more efficient use of those cars. Interestingly enough, the head of Transurban who was speaking at a financial review uh, seminar the other day. He's all in favor, of course, of uh, easing congestion so more cars can go through the tunnels for the increasing toll. But he also lets slip something else, I think, where he's saying, We've got intelligent transport systems, mobility as a service, and other technologies that are combining now in different ways to fundamentally change how we use and fund transport. We have autonomous vehicles, integrated transport apps, ride sharing. Thanks to technology, we're at the tipping point, redefining mobility. So, this is of the past. It was already clearly of the past in the 1950s and 1960s when cities around the world suffered from these uh, freeways coming through their centres. But this is unbelievably of the past in the days of digital technologies and smart city uh, possibilities. And so all the terrible grief that communities have suffered individually and, as, uh, and, 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 in, and, and in their neighbourhoods has been completely and totally unnecessary and is an unbelievable cost that's been imposed upon the citizens of New South Wales in general. And what is needed is a much more intelligent and integrated public transport system instead of West Connects. Thank you.